It's 2.30 in the morning, but everyone is awake at the Vinci nuclear reactor in Serbia. A massive operation to remove dangerous uranium fuel is underway. At the last minute, Serbian President Boris Tadic arrives to give his support to this important convoy. Tonight's shipment ends more than a decade of work to move the reactor's fuel rods to Russia, which has the facilities to store the material safely and securely. This particular shipment has 8,030 fuel elements being repatriated. Now this is the largest single shipment that's being made at one time back to Russia. This is also the largest project of its type in the IEA for technical cooperation history. So it's a very important effort for the IEA, it's very important for Serbia, and it's very important for the worldwide global threat reduction initiative. Under the umbrella of this initiative, the IAEA coordinated the multinational effort to prevent Vinci's highly enriched uranium, known as HEU, from falling into terrorist hands. HEU is a main component of a nuclear device, of a nuclear explosive device. So it's why the whole world is working for non-proliferation of this material, so it cannot be used by the bad guys to build the nuclear devices. Preparing this shipment has required the support of several nations. For example, Russia managed the packaging of all the fuel. The United States contributed financing and other expertise. Even non-governmental organizations, such as the Nuclear Threat Initiative, played an important role. We uh, determined that there was about four and a half bombs worth of nuclear material there, dangerous material. The United States government was alerted to it, the Russian government were alerted to it, the Serbian government, and the IAEA. So there was a partnership, and the partnership was enormously important. After years of planning and preparation, the Vinci project came down to a final three-day odyssey. First, a team of specialized heavy cargo transporters from Slovenia delicately load the Russian-supplied containers onto trucks. About 3,000 security personnel have been assigned to protect this shipment out of Serbia. The fuel rods are held in 16 of these containers, each one weighing at least 25 metric tons. Watched by helicopters overhead, the trucks drive 200 kilometers on highways closed to all other traffic. For much of the route, sentries are stationed every 50 meters on both sides of the road. Finally, the trucks arrive at a quiet industrial site where the containers begin the next leg of their journey. Here, just a few kilometers from the Serbian-Hungarian border at a rail yard, workers behind me are loading the last of 16 containers onto this train headed out of Serbia and ultimately towards Russia. In the pre-dawn light, crews ready the train for departure. The train rumbles 800 kilometers through Hungary and across Slovenia before this cargo ship can set sail for its three-week, 8,000-kilometer journey to Russia's Arctic port of Murmansk. As the ship leaves the dock, relief washes over all those who have worked so hard and Serbia looks to the future. We want to demonstrate that uh, uh, Serbia, after the tragic breakup of Yugoslavia, uh, he's coming back to its tradition of being a, a respectable, predictable, reliable partner of the international community. And now we can say that we are happy and we, are, we, we can say that we are a little bit proud that we succeed to, to, to answer to all questions, to, to, to face to all challenges, and to successfully finish all this job. We're in a race between cooperation and catastrophe. In this case, cooperation won. Cooperation between the United States and Russia and Serbia and IAEA, and even a non-governmental organization like NTI. So the good guys won this time, but it's an example of what we have to do all over the world.